Hello fellow pipe smoker, Sean Ferris here with StorytellersPipe.com uh, Just getting to the end of a bowl here uh, This is a dual review uh, I haven't done anything in a couple weeks because of Christmas and craziness with the store So I thought uh, I would do a review on a pipe that is in my personal collection This is a fourth generation Eric Stockaby This is a 1931 burnt sienna if you remember a video I did some time back I did uh, one with the special edition band on it this has the standard fourth generation band on it uh, very nice pipes this is a Danish collaboration between Eric Stockaby and Peter Jeppesen he is the pipe maker the designs are Stockaby designs. They are either from the Stockaby family vaults or from Eric himself. And as you can see, uh, what many would consider to be very Danish. Uh, you've got the bend, you've got the slightly forward cant on the bowl. So that and the dual contrast stain uh, make these. A very striking pipe. These are handmade so there will be slight variations uh, from one to the next even though the general shape and everything will be identical there will be slight uh, personality traits for each pipe so uh, that's part of the reason why they're priced at the the range that they are is because these are handmade artisan pipes. So if you haven't checked out fourth generation you haven't checked out the the pipe series give them a, a look if you're looking for something in the the handmade danish range these definitely fit the bill i enjoy mine very much uh tobacco this week there is a review on one that is overlooked and underrated and i think it's time has come uh, a lot of guys love 5100 red cake now this is not a match blend to that although it does share very uh, several similarities traits uh, has a lot in common with that blend this is Sutliff's 515 RC1 bulk this is a blend that uh, some pipers like to smoke straight uh, it's a fantastic blend as a standalone Red Virginia. Uh, some like to use it as a blending component. Works great for both. I usually use this as a standalone. This is a change up blend for me. Generally speaking, I am not a big Red Virginia smoker, but this is one that actually has enough uh, character and nuance that it actually is an interesting smoke for me. I do enjoy it a lot and uh, it's one that I look forward to from time to time as a, a good change up, something different for the palate. So with that, uh, as you can see, nice mottled reds, some darks, some lighter, some mid-tone reds. Uh, but it is a nice red Virginia, very consistent in appearance and ribbon cut. Uh, nose on this, the, the tin note, pick up on... A twangy, sour, not ketchup-y like 5100, but there is a sour, twangy uh, note to it. Pick up kind of a fermented hay, some underlying fruity citrus, touch of sweetness, earthy. So that's, that's kind of a, generally what I get from this. It has a very pleasant, very nice... Tin note, bag note. It's one of those that you can bury your nose in and smell again and again, and you don't really tire of it. So, when it comes time for smoking this blend, um, I find that it is just a tad damp, not wet, but damp. And uh, for me, I like to dry it just a little bit, not much, um, but just a little bit, and it smokes very well for me. I don't get uh, any real tongue bite to deal with. I don't have any issues with it getting goopy, so for me this is a, a blend that, from that aspect, 
I can appreciate and I enjoy. Uh, Flavor-wise, what I get from it when I, I light it up, I get that kind of musty, twangy, uh, sour, the underlying tobacco. I get that stewed, uh, fermented kind of hay. Uh, it's not as strong as a dark fired, but it's a little bit more body than a lot of the light Virginias, so it's somewhere in that middle ground. It does have some characteristics that are similar to 5100. Uh, but it's not going to be an apples to apples match. Uh, if it, you smoke the tobacco, base it on its own merits, and don't do a direct comparison, I think you'll find that it is a very pleasant smoking blend, very enjoyable. Uh, if you're going to do a comparison to 5100, you're going to feel like it comes up short a little bit. Uh, nothing's going to be comparable to 5100. The farmer who grew the tobacco leaf uh, for 5100 uh, went out of business, retired, wh what have you, uh, no longer produces leaf. So uh, because that farmer no longer harvests that seed, utilizes that soil, doesn't have that climate, any red leaf is not going to be exact. So even if you had the exact recipe for 5100 any leaf that you use is not going to be identical to it and I think that's where we kind of see some of the difference uh, with 515RC1 is that uh, while it's the same Red Virginias different farmers grew it and the resulting tobacco is slightly different very enjoyable uh, very pleasant smoke it's one that uh, I think you should give a shot if you are a Red Virginia fan. This is definitely something that uh, you should consider. Uh, I like it enough, and I want others to, to have a shot at it. So this is going to be the January blend of the month. So this will be going out with our orders and uh, give you guys a chance, if you haven't tried it, to give it a shot and see what you think. As always, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Uh, and we appreciate uh, everything that you have done supporting us in 2019. We look very forward to 2020. And uh, with that, thank you for stopping by uh, and visiting with me here at thestorytellerspipe.com. And happy piping.